welcome to the Pi DP10, a mainframe for the living room. And its first, poorly produced demo video, I'm the AI for Otto and Oscar, no YouTubers, clearly. We're running the Pi DP10 here with a little demo program. The new website shows our progress. We've now done replicas of the PDP 11, 8 and 10. This is the last KA-10 at the Living Computer Museum. Brought back to life in 2018, it made it possible to fine-tune our front panel replica. So, mainframes are boring, with COBOL and accounting, right? But, a few PDP 10s escaped this fate. And the Pi DP celebrates that, and a project to restore the ITS operating system. ITS was created by hackers, at the MIT AI Labs. In the 60s and 70s, nobody else had access to a computer of this power, to just do whatever they wanted. It accelerated computer science enormously. Let's boot up the PDP-10 with ITS. We pull up the simulated teletype on its console port, the Pi DP prepares itself by inserting a paper tape in the virtual paper tape reader, the bootstrap is read and run when you hit the read in switch. Okay. Disk dump was loaded off paper tape. We enter, I, T, S, escape, G, and ITS itself boots. We can take our eyes off the teletype, and start up one of the unique night TV terminals. These were managed by a PDP-11, which was memory mapped into the PDP-10 itself. The result, terminals with capabilities never seen before. Sixteen of these terminals could be used simultaneously. With full bitmapped graphics displays. Not just unique at the time, but unheard of. A lot of display hacks have been recovered from MIT's archive tapes. Note the little clock. It keeps running while the user continues to do other things. MIT students had multi-user, multitasking graphics displays. In 1972, If you know a bit about video game history, it will come as no surprise that Space War was ported over to the night TV terminals, playing Space War was an essential part of the curriculum at MIT. And the full version of Space War required scarce access to the high-resolution Type 340 display. With TV War, that problem was solved. Here, we browse through the game's directory. Lots of them. In total, there are over 400 ITS programs recovered. Today, we only focus on the light entertainment though. The Type 340 high resolution display is an interesting beast. A repurposed radar display tube was used, and although essentially this was a vector display, DEC gave it some special capabilities. Call it a vector dot display. Space War was its most popular, and perhaps most famous application. But Sirius CAD CAM was pioneered on this display too. And one application, demo to visitors, triggered the first massive wave of interest in AI. It was called Shudlu, and we'll do a separate video on it later.
Night TV terminals were for MIT students, but ITS was the first operating system freely accessible on the ARPANET, which later became the Internet. People logged into ITS from everywhere, a popular terminal for this was DEX VT52. No graphics, and slow connections. But no matter from where you logged in, if the Type 340 display was free, you could use it. Here, a user logs in from a VT52 to run Peak. This is the ITS system monitor. It had a nice feature. Hit Ctrl Y, and it used the Type 340 display. With a light pen, you could flip through many pages of system information, but press P, and you could actually continue doing other things on the VT52 terminal itself. For too many users, that something else turned out to be Zork. The adventure game got to be so popular, that ITS was modified so that you had to start Zork in a special manner. And ITS allowed no more than three users to play at the same time. This restriction was controversial, to say the least. Let's open up a few more night TV terminals on screen, just because we can. And just because the Raspberry Pi 5 that we use inside, has no problem at all with the workload. But we close with an important feature. You do not want to run all these devices on the Pi DP10 itself. Here, we show how a laptop can be upgraded to be a night TV. But we could also make it into a VT52, or any other terminal. So. That was it. Our first PIDP 10 demo. Thank you for watching. Maybe we will get the hang of making videos after a couple more. We do admire your patience.